I'm UtahPolicy.com Managing Editor Brian Schott. I'm here with former Salt Lake City Mayor and now Head of High Road for Human Rights, Rocky Anderson. Rocky, thank you so much for taking a couple of minutes to talk with us today. Happy to do it, Brian. Uh, thank for, you. For people who are unfamiliar, tell us a little bit about High Road for Human Rights. What are you trying to do and how did this organization come about? I founded High Road for Human Rights because contrary to the promise of never again that we and the international community made after the Holocaust, the actual response by the United States to major human rights abuses, genocide, slavery, mm -hmm. torture, has been basically to look away and say we're not going to deal with it. Two million people killed in Cambodia, 200,000 Bosnians and two million people run off, the continuing genocide in the Sudan, uh, it's gone on and on. Uh, Rwanda, 800,000 people killed in 100 days, and President Clinton and his administration sat on their hands, as did Congress. Mm -hmm. And th the lesson to be learned is that the leadership isn't going to be on the whole by our elected officials. It's going to be, as in every major movement in this country, it's got to come from us. It's <laughs> So, so how do you measure su success? Do you have any met metrics that you have yes. that, you're, that you're measuring the success of this organization? Ultimately, success is change in the real world. Mm -hmm. Do we get Congress to stop torture and to restore the rule of law in a country that is vastly different now than it was 10 years ago in terms of checks and balances, uh, accountability for violations of the law, war crimes? Uh, violations of the, our Domestic War Crimes Act as well as numerous international treaties. Uh, have we made changes in U.S. policies that positively impacts slavery in this world, both labor and sex slavery? There are now more slaves in the world than ever in human history. And the United States could make an enormous difference providing the international leadership we could have done it in every one of these instances. Uh, if, if the Clinton administration had gone to the United Nations and said, we need to stop what's going on in, in Rwanda in 1994, that genocide would have been over. So what the Clinton administration was looking for, and his national security advisor, Anthony Lake, made it very clear. He said, we need to hear from you. We need to hear from the public. You all need to make more noise if we're going to take any action to stop the genocide. And sadly, tragically, the American public remained quiet. There was no group that was organized to pull together people at the grassroots so that we were all pushing and letting people in Congress and the White House know that we expected them to take action. So that's how this organization is vastly different from any other human rights organization. We get people to come together on a monthly basis. We provide educational materials to raise consciousness, which is the first step. And then secondly, to provide tools to High Road members for them to take the kinds of actions that in coordination with others around the country will make the difference. But one could argue, just to play the devil's advocate, that not much has changed since the Bush administration with their, uh, the, uh, the, the memos allowing torture. The Obama administration really hasn't done much to change that. We still have detainees down at G G Gitmo. I mean, these, these things are not changing. These, these, these policies are, are still being per perpetuated. That's right. And it's not going to happen overnight, but I can tell you, High Road for Human Rights has taken a principled stand. We've been as critical of the Obama administration as we were the Bush administration. And in fact, what we've seen during the Obama administration is in many instances an institutionalization mm -hmm. of the kinds of abuses that we just thought, most of us thought, were just aberrations during a weird period during the Bush administration. But when, when you have the executive branch going into the courts and asserting the state secrets doctrine, so you knock the courts out as a check on abuses of power by the executive branch. That's a frightening thing. That's no longer a republic. That's a tyranny. And we're getting closer and closer to a tyranny with this enormous concentration of power 
and all the secrecy, hiding photographs away, hiding documents away, telling the courts that they can't consider on the merits claims of felonious warrantless wiretapping or horrendous human rights abuses like torture. And the Obama administration, like the Bush administration, has been going into the courts and getting these cases dismissed on the basis of the state secrets doctrine. Let me ask you this. Former President Bush recently came to Salt Lake City for a book signing going to Costco. You organized a protest. If President Obama came to Salt Lake City, would you organize a protest there? Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, we have made very clear to the Obama administration and to Congress that we expect them to uphold the rule of law, that we expect them to uphold our most fundamental constitutional values and to restore much of which has been lost, including our system of checks and balances. The country I grew up in, we had courts that served as a check. They would apply the law, and if anybody violated the law at any place in our country, at any level, they would be held accountable. No, any longer, they're not held accountable. And without accountability, there is no rule of law. There are no checks and balances.